Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're back with one of your favorite types of videos. We have another tier list. Now because it is nearing the end of spring, we will be updating all of our tier lists to make sure you guys are up to date with all the units and how good they are. And today we're going to be talking about every RGB 5 star unit in the game, including limited and collab units, and talking about how good they are for PvE content. We're not going to be talking about PvP, so nothing related to Guild Wars, nothing related to Arena or World Arena, strictly for PvE like hunts, adventure, expeditions, and stuff like that. Now before we get started with this video guys, if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get, to get updates when I have videos like this release. And also make sure you guys check out my Instagram. I'm going to be having another giveaway soon at 20k subscribers, which kind of seems far away, but it's going to come a lot faster than you think. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and we're going to have another giveaway going on soon. That being said, let's get started. So we have Alencia first. So Alencia, pretty underrated unit for PvE. I actually used her a lot in the past when I first started playing because I pulled her very early. She has a defense break on her S1. She has a AoE strip on her S3 which makes her good against like Azumac and Queen. She also has a defense buff which will make her more tankier. The problem is her S2. So for her S2 to get maximum value, you're going to want her to get hit a lot so you can proc it and do extra damage, right? Thing is, if you're going to do that, you have to put her in the front line. And if you have Alencia in the front line, guys, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of her damage for bulk. And also, if you have her in the front line instead of a knight, you're actually going to be giving up an Aureus. You're not going to really want to run Alencia with another knight because you're going to have to run a Soul Weaver with that. And then you can only run one damage dealing unit, which will make your run super slow. So for that reason, Alencia, not that great in my opinion. In theory, she seems very good, but the fact that she needs to be hit a lot while you have to really give up a knight slot for her to work in PvE makes her not that great of a unit. But, you know, she is not terrible either, so I'm going to put her in the B tier. Next, we have Aramintha. I think she's very underrated. She has an AoE attack buff. She has pretty decent AoE damage. The only problem is that she has a lot of debuffs, which makes her unusable against some bosses with cleansing mechanics that enrage after they have a certain amount of debuffs, such as Queen and Azunak. But she does have an AoE attack buff, which gives her some value. You can probably use her in like Earth Expedition and Golem and be just fine. Uh, but the thing is, there's already better options for that. So I'm going to put her in the C tier. Next, we have Balan Sazan. So Balan Sazan is going to be in the high B tier or low A tier. It's up to you. I'm going to put him in the A tier because I think he's very good at what he does. He's extremely good for Earth Expedition and Golem. He has a defense break. He has a lot of AoE damage. He just does crazy damage output. He also has some debuffs, which makes him uh, pretty decent against bosses that don't have a debuff cap. Uh, but the thing is, like in Earth Expedition and Golem, there's no debuff cap, and he just does crazy damage if you put him on Kaladra. And if you pair him with another defense breaker, uh, he is a very good backup defense breaker in case your defense breaker misses their defense break. It's a lot of defense breaks, but yeah, very good unit for Earth Expedition and Golem. Next, we have Baikin. So Baikin is one-shot hunt. She is the best one-shotter for Banshee 13 alongside Strays, in my opinion. She will make your gearing requirements for Banshee 13 one shot super, super low. Definitely recommend picking her up if you, oh, I guess you can't pick her up, but if you have her and you're looking for a Banshee 13 one shot team, then Baikin will be your number one option as the boss one shotter. Basar, yeah, he's just terrible in PvP. I'm going to put him in the low D tier. Honestly, if there was an F tier, he would be in the F tier. Bologna, so Bologna, I think, is an A tier, uh, probably S tier, actually. So. Bologna doesn't get a lot of love because everyone thinks of Bologna as like Seaside Bologna because Seaside Bologna is so good. But Green Bologna is just as good in my opinion or maybe almost just as good. She has a strip, she has a defense break. Her S1 has a built-in Daydream Joker which makes her do crazy amounts of damage. She's also good in Banshee 13 one-shot. She does a lot of damage like everywhere and she has defense break. So why wouldn't you want to use her? The fact that her S1 has a built-in Daydream Joker Makes it so if you have her on another Daydream Joker artifact, she does crazy amounts of damage to high HP bosses. It makes her very good for like Abyss, very good in an adventure mode. You can also use her in some expeditions, although the scaling will be reduced. Just a very, very powerful unit, guys. Definitely want to use her. You can even use her in like Azmanac Hunt as well and like Banshee, like I said. A very good unit. Make sure you guys build her if you're new to the game and you're looking for a good single target slash AoE damage dealer that has a defense break capability. Next, we have Cecilia. Uh, nothing much to say about her. She's mostly used for PvP, but she does have some usage. I'm going to put her in the high C tier, mid C tier, because she is very, very good in Light Expedition. But outside that, you're not going to really use her that much. Uh, Celine, not that good either. Primarily a PvP unit to counter Cleave and opening teams. Um, in PvE, not that great. 
Cerise, I'm gonna put her in the high B tier, actually probably the low A tier. Actually, let's put her in the high B tier because yeah, she's good. Similarly to Cecilia, she's good in dark, um, or not dark expedition, but in an expedition. She's good in dark expedition, right? She's good in fire expedition. Uh, you can also even use her in Wyvern if you really wanted to. She's a very good defense breaker for those two expeditions. And the thing is, compared to Cecilia, I think Cerise is pretty much irreplaceable for those expeditions. She will speed up your runs significantly, especially for dark expedition. She'll give you so many more points. Cecilia can be replaced for like Aeros in like expedition. So for that reason, I'm going to put Cerise in the high B tier. Uh, honestly, if you're a super late game, you're going to probably rank her even higher because uh, she will make your expedition so much easier if you have her on, on pretty insane gear, right? Next, we have Sermia. So Sermia, mostly for one-shot hunts. Of course, you can use her for, you know, single target DPS, but her primary use for late game is going to be one-shotting Asmanac and one-shotting Kades. Next, we have Charles, also going to be used for one-shot hunt. Thing is, you can also use him as, like, a stripper with his S2 for, like, Queen and stuff like that, but honestly, not that great at it, in my opinion. I tried him out a lot in, the, in my beginning days of Epic 7 to try to use him in Queen. It didn't really... You know pan out that great compared to other units for that reason i'm just going to put him in the one shot hunt tier because he's very good at banshee 13 one shot for clearing the first wave next we have charlotte so charlotte is actually a pretty decent damage dealer for aoe damage um but the thing is that's all she does she's just pure damage she has nothing else for the team so for that reason we're going to put her in the c tier next we have chloe uh chloe i'm pretty sure can one shot wyvern as well if you run her in a very specific team uh, she's only really ever used in Wyvern though, and she's not even that great at it in my opinion. For that reason, I'm going to put her in the C tier. I guess we'll put her around here because, yeah, you can still use her in Wyvern. She is good if you can speed to your team, but I'm not really a big fan of her. Next, we have Shu, pretty PvP-based unit. She's kind of similar to Lencia in the fact that she's like a bruiser that does a lot of damage and is really tanky, uh, but she's not really good anywhere outside of PvP because she doesn't have that much utility besides like buffing her team, uh, but her buffs don't really do much for her team, so yeah. Command Laika is going to be, she's very, very good for uh, Kades, right? Uh, you can also use her in PvP as well, but that's besides the point. Uh, for Kades, I think she's going to be somewhere around like the B tier, right? She's a very good Kades unit, especially if you're trying to one-shot. She's a very strong uh, unit in that regard. Next, we have Destina. Uh, she can be used in like Banshee, and you can use her as a general purpose uh, cleanser because she does a, have a lot of cleansing and a lot of heals. But compared to other Soul Weavers, she's not really that good because all she does is heal. So I'm going to put her in this C tier. Next, we have DN. So I think DN is an easy, easy A or S tier. I'm going to put her in the S tier because um, keep in mind that if you want her to be in the S tier, guys, I think you need to have her on Rod of Amaryllis because she doesn't have healing. So if you have it on Rod Ap Amaryllis, I'll put her in the S tier. If not, she'll be probably like a B tier because you need to run another healer with her. But the reason why she's S tier, guys, is because she turn cycles super fast. With the new exclusive equipment, she'll see her push her team with her S1 or her S3. And also she has like, or S2, I mean. And she also has a crazy attack buff for her team while shielding her team for a while. I think she's a very, very good unit. You can even use her in Banshee one shot as an attack buffer. She's pretty good. And she's just a good general purpose Soul Weaver, especially if you don't have Tamron yet for an attack buffing soul even unit. Next we have Dizzy. Dizzy is the queen of abyss. She's very good. Uh, I'm tempted to put her in S plus tier, but I think I'm going to put her in the, actually I'll put her in S plus because you can basically use her in like 90 floors of abyss, which is pretty crazy. You can use her in adventure. You can use her in fire expedition if you wanted to. You can use her in wyvern if you need a debuffer. Uh, she's just a very powerful unit. She's good in automaton tower. She just has crazy debuffs that will cripple uh, enemy, uh, you know, at, like monsters and also be able to you know, stop the enemy from doing damage if you get lucky with stuns on the adds that the boss summons. So I think she's like an easy S plus tier. Honestly, I'll drop her to S tier because I think there's going to be some other S plus units. Ada, mostly PvP unit used for cleave. We're going to put her in D tier. Elna, also, you know, two long cooldowns, not enough healing as a soul user. Uh, she's primarily used as an answer to cleave as well. Elfelt, she is going to be a one shot hunt unit. Very good in Katie's one shot, in my opinion. Um, besides that, you're not going to use her. Amelia. I think Amelia is going to be C tier. She does have an attack buff and she does have some, you know, okay healing with a barrier and a CR push. The only thing is going to be that, you know, she doesn't heal enough to be your primary healer. So for that reason, we're going to put her in the low C tier. Next, we have a Lane, one shot hunt for Banshee 13. Pretty decent at it, but not as good as Baikin. Um, next, we have Fairy Tail Tenebria, strictly a PvP opening unit. Do not use her in PvE. She does have a poison on her S1, which I guess is okay, but. Yeah, her entire kit is going to be for PvP. Flan is going to be for Wyvern one-shot, we'll put her there. Haste, um, 
Yeah, his kind of sucks, but honestly, you can use him in one-shot hunts. I actually saw him used in a Wyvern one-shot hunt, so we'll, we'll put him there just so he's not in the D tier because I feel bad for him. Holiday Euphine, also going to be in the D tier somewhere around like here. She does have all AoE damage, which makes her good against some raid bosses, but her damage is pretty low in my opinion. Also, she has a lot of debuffs, which will make it so like bosses like Asmanac and Queen can cleanse and you know do a lot of damage to you. And yeah, just her damage is not good enough in my opinion. Hua Young, I... Don't know if she's used in one shot, I'm pretty sure she's not, but she's strictly a PvP unit, so we'll put her around here. I guess you can use her as a single target DPS, but you know, in my opinion, not that great. Ilyanov, one shot hunt unit for like Azumnak and Banshee, she's pretty good. Next we have Asaria. I'm going to put Asaria in the S plus tier. Now hear me out, a lot of you guys might disagree, but I think especially if you pair with Tamarin, she's a very powerful unit because she pretty much makes it so that Tamarin has idle form up all the time. She's a very good strip unit. She's a very good defense breaker, very good support unit with all her utility. You can use her in Azumnak, you can use her in Normal Banshee, you can use her in pretty much every single um, area of content that you bring Tamarin in. You can use her in Ice Exposition, you can use her in uh, Raid for pretty much every single boss, you can use her in Adventure, right? She's very strong. Uh, the fact that you can pair her with Tamarin and they synergize so well together will automatically put her in the S plus tier because, as you guys know, Tamarin is super, super broken. Next we have Kaurik. So Kaurik is primarily a PvP unit. He's actually pretty good in PvP, very good against Rumuru, uh, but in PvE, in my opinion, not that great because he's like an opener unit. We'll put her somewhere around here with like Huayang, right? Good opener unit. Kron, I'm gonna put him in the B tier, somewhere around like here because Kron is very good in Earth Expedition and actually a very good AoE damage dealer. I remember using him in Raid, in Hell Raid against a lot of the bosses because there's a lot of AoE required for Hell Raid and he's actually not that bad. Uh, the only thing is, yeah, he's very squishy, and if you un get unlucky in Procus S2 early, he's susceptible to dying very quickly. But his damage is not bad, and you just need to make sure you bring enough buffs to make sure that his S1's constantly AoEing. You can also probably use him in Golem as well, and just like any area of content where you need a lot of AoE damage, given that you have the buffs to keep his AoE on his S1. Next we have Ken. Ken's like a, I guess like a Golem unit, and he's actually not that bad. He's a defense break as well, pretty significant damage as well. The only thing is a lot of units will outshine him at what he does. He's pretty similar to what Alencia does, I'd say. So put them pretty close together. They have like a lot of damage, a single, probably like pretty good defense breaks as well together. Um, but the only thing is like, yeah, I think Ken does a lot more damage than Alencia because he doesn't need to rely on his S2. So we'll put him a bit, little bit higher. Next we have Kisei. So Kisei I only ever see used in like Wyvern, but she's like really bad at it too. So, like, compared to, like, Sigurd and Luna, like, you should never use her. So I'm going to put her somewhere in the D tier as well, because you know, even though she's really good in PvP as a single target DPS, there's going to be way better options for you for Wyvern. Next, we have Kral. So Kral is a very strong PvP knight, but he's also decent in PvE, because he's super tanky with his S3 shield and his S2 defense buff, and he's just very, very annoying to deal with. Um, I guess not annoying because PvE is PvE, but he's a very tanky unit, so you can honestly slot him in the front wherever you want, he'll be pretty decent. I'm going to put him probably in like the B tier. He doesn't do anything special, he's just going to make your team more tankier. But honestly, there's no real need to take him over like an Aeros, because Aeros does what he does, but a little bit better for PvE. Next we have Landy, so easy S+. Plus. Landy is a crazy, crazy strong unit for PvE. Anywhere that is not a fire boss, she does crazy amounts of damage with her S2 scaling. Her S3 will CR push your team, you will penetrate defense, you will also CR push your team. Her S1 makes it so she will CR push herself constantly. She's a very strong damage dealer for PvE. Not really much to say, you can bring her pretty much like everywhere and she's like very very good as long as you're not against a fire boss. Uh, Lydica, I'm gonna put her in the D tier. She's a good PvP opener, but in PvE not much use unless you're using her against like certain abyss floors where you're looking to CR push the boss back, which is, you know, not a lot of floors will require that. Next we have Lilius, so Lilius is an easy S tier, somewhere around here I'd say. AoE cleanse, she has her S1 to constantly dual attack with her team, if you bring her with at least 2 damage dealers, she'll be a very very strong unit because uh, she will always bring, or almost always bring her DPS, making her a damage dealer as well in a sense. And she's very good in Hall of Trials, you can use her in Golem, you can use her in Azumnak, you can use her in Raid, you can use her in Abyss if you need a cleanser, you can basically use her everywhere, Earth Expedition is good as well. There's a lot of areas of contents that you can use her, and she has a lot of utility built into her kit, which makes her very, very strong. Next, we have Lilibet, one-shot hunt for Banshee, not that great though. Ludwig, same thing, one-shot hunt for Banshee, but not that great. And then we have Luluka. So I'm very tempted to put Luluka in S+, because I'm a huge fan, but I'm going to you know, restrain myself and put her in the S tier. 
She's a very good defense breaker, and with Isle of Violin for Hollow Trials, she becomes a very powerful dispel and strip unit. Very good in Asmanac, very good in Wyvern, very good in Dark Exposition, very good in Fire Exposition, very good in Raid. You can also bring it to an Abyss. I think I'm going to put her in S+, plus actually, because I think she just has so much usage. Uh, just a lot of people don't use her that much. Honestly, she's not going to be like the best in slot unit for a lot of areas of content, but she's going to be a very, very strong option for a lot of areas of, areas of content. Very flexible, and because of that flexibility, I'm going to put her in S+. Plus. Next, we have Luna. I think Luna will be an easy A tier. Very strong single target DPS unit after her buffs. She does crazy damage, she has a defense break, and she's easy to gear because of her S2. Looking for a de decent single target unit for like Fire Expedition, where she's very good in, or Abyss, or even Wyvern, um, you can just bring her and she's a very powerful unit. Melissa, yeah, PvP unit, and she's not even good in PvP right now, so we'll put her in the D tier somewhere here. Milam, she's also a PvP unit, unfortunately. Even though she's like a very strong PvP unit, she's unfortunately not that great in PvE. Mort, same thing, not that good in PvP or PvE because uh, he's strictly used for PvP and I guess he's not that good in PvP either. Uh, Mui, so Mui is a Banshee one-shot unit, I'd say. You can use her as an attack buffer, but outside of that, she's not really good. And for Banshee one-shot, she's not even great either because she can, you know, accidentally bring a dual attack with her S2, which makes her not that good. So yeah, actually no, she can't because her S2 is an AoE attack. So yeah. You actually can't dual attack with their S2, so she becomes a very good uh, Banshee 13 one-shot unit. Um, so probably around like here. I think she's actually pretty decent. Ilyana is probably like here. Next we have Pavel, Banshee 13 one-shot unit. Outside of that, not anywhere. Um, Para, you know, not any usage in PvP, PvE actually. She's very, very strictly used for PvP. Same thing with Politis. Now keep in mind, I'm like just kind of randomly putting units in the D tier because uh, they're all equally bad for PvE in my opinion. Ram, so one-shot hunt for Banshee 13. You can also use an Earth Expedition, so she's very, very good um, for Earth Expedition. But the thing is, like, yeah, mostly, you know, if I put her in the regular tier list, she'd be like C or B tier. But I'm gonna put her in the one-shot hunt tier because she's mostly used for Banshee one-shot. Ran PvP opener, so not really used in PvE. Um, I guess you can use him as an attack buffer and DPS unit. So I guess I'll put him in the C tier. Um, but you're gonna notice that, like, a lot of the newer units, guys, they're mostly going to be used for PvP instead of PvE, which is, uh, which is cool, I guess, for the PvP meta, but I kind of hope that Smilegate releases more PvE units, especially in the form of, you know, 3-star and 4-star units, so that newer players can have a better chance at, you know, catching up in content. Next, we have Ravi. So Ravi, I think, is an A tier. She's not really, like, super strong anywhere, or I guess, like, OP anywhere, but she's always decent. You can use her in a Tamaton Tower. You can honestly use her as a frontline for anywhere, and she's pretty decent. Very good in Adventure, probably good in Earth, uh, um, what am I saying, Golem as well. You can probably use her as Raid as well as a tank, so... Um, although she's not like sp like specialized for anywhere, she's just a good general purpose unit. If you put her in the front on counter set, she'll be pretty decent. Ray has decent cleansing, but his cooldowns are too long, so we'll put her next to Destina. You can use him actually in Banshee Normal, but most people don't run Banshee Normal anyway, so yeah, he's going to be in the C tier. Pretty decent cleanser, um, but his cooldowns are very, very long. Ra uh, Ram is going to be Banshee, or uh, not Banshee one shot, Wyvern one shot. Rimuru is, yeah, like I said, not that good in PvP, PvE because fixed damage is not that great in PvE, mostly PvP unit. Rowana, S+, very, very good for certain uh, adventure, what's it called, adventure stages where bosses will always counterattack or, you know, extra attack. There's a lot of them in episode 3 and 4. Very good in uh, Hell Raid for a lot of the bosses, and you actually need her for Hell Raid auto team. Very good in Ice Expedition, she's the best tank if you actually have the gear and the team comp around her. She's also very, very good in Katie's, so yeah. She's just a very strong unit because in the areas of content where she's really good, she will basically make hard uh, boss fights like super easy mode. You're gonna you're gonna notice this when you use her in episode three and four, how OP she is for adventure. Next we have SSB, easy S plus as you guys probably know, and put her right next to Landy. Very good in Wyvern, very good in Wyvern one shot, very good in Asmanac, very good in Hell Raid, Abyss, uh, Fire Expedition, Dark Expedition, you name it. She's a very powerful unit, very good in Katie's as well. She's just extremely, extremely good for both early game and um, late game players alike. So you really want to make sure if you have her, you build her. She's very good in a lot of areas of content. Senya, mostly used for PvP as well, but not good there. Cirilla, I actually have no clue what she does. So, D tier. <laughs> Says, I mean, he's okay only in like Banshee, or not Banshee, Wyvern, because he has a perma debuff on his S1, so we'll put him in the high D tier. But besides that, he's not really used anywhere, and his damage is really crappy in um, Wyvern, so I don't recommend using him over other units. And there's a lot of good free-to-play Wyvern units now, so you don't really want to ever use him. 
Shuna, uh, I don't know if she does actually, so we put her in the D tier. Cigarette, we'll put her in the low S plus because she's only using Wyvern, but she's extremely, extremely good for Wyvern. Uh, she will make your account progression super fast for newer players, and she's very good for Wyvern one shot as well. Definitely recommend picking her up if you don't have her. Uh, if you already have her and you're not using her for Wyvern, what are you doing? Please use her. She's super strong and will speed up your runs and make them more consistent. And Wyvern is the area content you'll be farming the most of the time, so by having a strong Wyvern team, you will be saving a lot of time in-game and in real life by not having to spend as much time farming it. Next we have Soul, so I think Soul is an easy A. Very good starter unit, he's a very good single target DPS, very good for Golem, very good for uh, Earth Expedition, you can use him in Hell Raid. He's very underrated because he's a quote unquote free unit from the collab, but he's still a very good single target DPS in my opinion. Summertime Hysteria, strictly used for PvP, but you can also use her as a strip unit for like Hell Queen. The only thing is you have to make sure that you don't you know, stack too many debuffs on the boss so that she uh, cleanses and enrages, so we'll put her in somewhere around this area of the C tier. Tamarin, easy S+. Plus. Do I need to explain why? Uh, if you guys want me to sum her up, she's just like super broken. She has everything in her kit, literally everything in her kit besides a defense break, and she heals. So she's a very powerful unit. Uh, if you guys don't understand why she's broken, I'll summarize it. She has an AoE CR push, uh, she has an AoE attack buff, she has an AoE cleanse, she has healing, she has a four stool attack, she has an AoE strip. She's just, she's just giga broken. Uh, if you have her and you don't have her built, build her right now. <laughs> she's so good. Um, next we have Tenebria, I'll put her alongside Ball and Sazan because they're pretty synergistic with each other. You're pretty much going to bring them together for Earth Expedition. Uh, Tenebria is, actually I'll put her a little higher. Tenebria is very good as an AoE Defense Breaker. She actually does decent damage as well. You can bring her in Hell Raid similar to Ball and Sazan. I think she's a pretty powerful unit for PvE that's underrated. Tywin, I think she, he can be used for um, Wyvern One-Shot as well. Vildred, I think he's an S tier. Very good AoE damage dealer for general purpose, and he's best in slot for Azimak 13. Also very good in Hell Raid. You can also use him in Banshee as a wave 1 one-shotter. I think he's a pretty decent unit. Very underrated because, um, you know, people used to refer to, him, refer to him as the green RB because RB was super broken for a long time. But he's actually a pretty decent unit, and I think for PvE he's very strong. He was actually my selective summon unit, and I used to, he used to carry me all the time. He's also very good as a farmer for adventure mode, and will make your early game adventure super, super fast. He's actually the best unit for making your um, account progression the fastest for like the first few days because in adventure mode, he clears so quickly. Next we have Violet. So Violet is, you know, pretty decent um, for, you know, Katie's and Light Expedition, but besides that, not really used anywhere. So we'll put him in the C tier. Vivian, I'm gonna put her in the one-shot hunt. Of course, you can use her outside of it as an attack buffer and AoE damage dealer, but I think Vivian is going to be very, very strong for um, one shot hunt and for late game you're mostly only going to use her in one shot hunt so I'll put it in that tier. Euphina can be used as a one shotter for Banshee 13 as well but not that great in my opinion. Um, I think she well she's definitely better than these units so we'll put it around like here. Yuna. So Yuna I think is like super super underrated. She has an AoE attack buff and she has all AoE. Only thing is her damage is not that great. Um, you can probably use her as a general purpose like attack buffer if you really need one. She's also free to play from connections and she's good as a dog walker in adventure as well. Now, it's really hard to fit her into teams because usually you already have an attack buffer, but if you are lacking one, you can use a Yuna and she will attack buff your team. She will have pretty decent uh, AoE damage if you put her on, fa on good gear. And she's just a good support unit in general. Just make sure she's not like your primary DPS. Um, the other five units at the bottom here, we have Zahawk, strictly for PvP. We'll put him somewhere around here, not using PvE. Zeno, same thing. He's only good for PvP. Teyu, same thing. We'll put him somewhere here. Uh, Arya, same thing, only using PvP, and then Jacko, yeah, so all the new units guys are only used for PvP, as you'll see, which is kind of what Smilegate planned to do because, you know, the late game focus of the game is PvP, and they do think that PvE has enough units already to clear the content, which I think is somewhat true, but I kind of hope that they release more units so, you know, there's more diversity in the PvE content, because right now there's only like one best team for every area, so yeah, that would be nice. But yeah, that pretty much sums up the pve tier list for five star rgb units obviously we have a collab coming out we don't know which one it is if it's either v0 tensura and they'll probably bring along another unit so i'll probably update you guys on where that unit will fall in this tier list in a few days once i test that unit out and yeah we plan to actually you know have more tier lists come out update the old ones in the next few weeks as well as you know try to make new tier lists for new areas of content as well if you guys are enjoying these tier lists, guys, make sure you leave a like and comment down below, and we'll see you guys next video. Peace.